Hi all, welcome to the video lecture series of Python for Machine Learning. In this video lecture, we'll be discussing about how to handle exceptions in Python. First of all, we will define what is exceptions in Python. An exception in Python is an event and it occurs during the execution of a program and the importance of this event is it disrupts the normal flow of execution of the program so we can in a way we can think of exception as an error in general whenever a python program that is a python script faces a situation that it cannot handle then it will raise an exception when an exception is raised python must handle it immediately or it will terminate and quit the program so a python in python a, an exception can also be defined as an python object that represents an error we will see an example consider we have three functions say function a function b and function c function a calls function b and function b calls function c if an exception occurs in function c it must be either handled by function c if it is not handled in function c that exception will be thrown back to function b so it must be handled by b or if b also is not able to handle it it will be thrown back to function a and if function a is also not able to handle it then the program will terminate so whenever an exception is raised it must be immediately handled if it is not handled then the program will quit i hope you understood the definition of exception it can be defined as an object a python object that represents an error error or in general it is defined as an event which occurs during the execution of a program which disrupts the normal flow of program's execution that is the most known exception uh, most known definition of exceptions as mentioned just now once an exception is raised we must handle it so how can we do that so for catching exceptions in python we can make use of the try block or try close all the exceptions or the all the statements that may raise an exception will be written inside a try close so if any of the statements or if any of the lines of code that uh, raise an exception within the try clause those exceptions can be handled by using the accept clause so the lines of code that we want to do when an exception occurs must be written inside the accept clause and those lines of code which may arise or which which may raise an exception must be written inside the try clause so exceptions are handled in python by using the try statement the try clause will include all those statements from which we expect an ex an exception and what we have to do if an exception is raised that can be done or that those lines of code must be written inside the accept clause so by using try and accept clause we can choose what must happen when uh, when an exception is raised we will see an example of how exceptions are handled in python how try and uh, accept clauses are used for catching or handling exceptions in this example we have imported the sys module sys module is used to get the type of exception that was raised and then we have created a random list this list is actually consists of three elements first element is a character the remaining two elements are two integers one is zero and the other one is two and then we are starting a for loop here enters a loop variable and it loops through the list elements so initially the value of entry will be a then zero and then two so inside the for loop we have written the try and the accept clause so as mentioned earlier we have to write all those statements from which we expect an exception inside the try clause so in this we have written the print statement the entry is and the corresponding value of the entry value entry variable will be printed and then we are writing one statement r is equal to 1 by int of entry 
that means we are taking one element from the list and we are dividing one by the element inside the list as we all know we cannot divide an integer by a character we can divide an, a number only by integers other than zero okay and we have also mentioned that break statement and we have followed by the uh, try block or try close we have the accept close inside the accept close we have to write all those statements that we have to execute when an exception occurs so in this example we have written three print statements we have first of all we have mentioned the name of the the details of the exception that is raised if any and then we have uh, we have printed one statement next entry and one empty line also and outside the loop we have the reciprocal of entry okay now see how it is going to work initially the value of entry will be a so we will go inside the try clause we will print the statement the entry is so this value this statement will be printed at present the value of entry is the first element inside the list that is a so we getting this line of code uh, this line as the output and then we are trying to divide one by int of entry a that is we are converting the element uh, we are converting the value of the variable entry into integer but at present the value of entry is character a so it's not possible to divide an integer by a character so at this point an exception is, ra is raised so when an exception is raised the try block will stop there the exception will be thrown out of the try clause so it will be caught by the accept clause inside accept we have written whenever an exception occurs these three lines have to be executed so we are getting this oops that is this message is printed then class value error that is because of this statement sys.exe info sys is the sys module here and exe info is the method that, have, that we have to use to get the information about the uh, execution uh, sorry exception so that uh, content will be printed and again this word occurred that's printed and next line next entry that is also printed then we put once empty space so the space is there again the loop iterates so that see that program is not terminated the program is still repeating generally if the exceptions are not handled means the program will terminate but now the program is not terminating the loop iterates next the value of entry will be zero again so that line of code the entry is zero this line is printed we also cannot divide an integer by zero division by zero is not possible so again an exception is raised so now again the accept clause will work again oops and this content that is now the content is zero division error earlier it was value error now it is zero division error occurred that line is printed then again next entry is displayed then an empty space is also displayed again the loop iterates now the value of entry will be 2 again inside the try block we are printing the entry is the value of entry variable is 2 right now so it is printed and we are dividing 1 by 2 so that is a normal integer division that will work without any uh, without any exception so another value of r will be uh, 1 by 2 that is 0 0.5 since the exception is not raised here the next statement break will be executed so now the for loop terminates since it is break statement it will terminate the for loop so it will come out of the for loop so the accept clause will be executed only if any of the lines of code inside the try clause raises an exception if none of the lines inside the try clause raise an exception then accept block will not get executed so in the last, uh, last case when the value of entry is 2 this line of code does not create an exception not only this line none of the lines inside the try clause generates an exception so this exception clause will not be executed when the value of entry is 2 so then we are printing this value reciprocal of c the reciprocal of 2 is 0 0.5 we got this output only for the last value of entry for the remaining two value of entry we got we have the exception clause statements that is executed i hope the as mentioned just now this slide you know, shows you the explanation that i have given to you just now regarding the how the program was executed you can just go through this these lines once again
in the example just we saw the except clause handled both the exceptions in the same way we didn't specify or we, not, we did not mention any specific exception in the except clause it was a general except clause that is whatever may be the exception raised inside the try clause it will be handled by the same except clause in other words all the exceptions will be handled in the same way by the except clause in the previous example we can modify that that is we can specify which exceptions an except clause must catch instead of catching every exceptions we can specify if we want to catch only zero division error we can write an except clause for that uh, to, to catch that exception alone so in such a way I mean we can specify what kind of exceptions each except clause can handle okay that means a try clause can have any number of except clauses for example if the lines of code inside the try clause may raise five different exceptions we can write five different except clauses one for each exception so that the operation or the actions that we have to take for each exception can be different for example if we have to do something when zero division error is occurred then we can write one except clause to handle that exception alone if we want to do something else when another exception occurs we can write another except clause so that only when that exception occurs that except clause will be invoked or will be executed so instead of writing general except clause we can specifically mention an expert clause for each type of uh, specific exceptions even if we write multiple except clauses only one except clause will execute at a time because even if the lines of code inside the try block or try clause is capable of raising multiple exceptions only one exception will be raised at a time so only one except clause will be executed at a time so even if we have multiple except clauses only one except clause will get executed and we can also use tuple values to specify multiple exceptions in an except clause that is by using single except clause itself we can use multiple values a tuple values to specify multiple exceptions so a try clause with multiple except clause will look like this so we have only one try clause but we have all to the three except clauses in this example as you can see the first except clause is only for value error exception so if any of the lines inside this try clause generates value error exception that will be handled by this except clause alone this except clause will not handle any other kind of exceptions similarly if any lines of code inside this try clause generates type error or zero division error then both of those exceptions will be handled by this except clause so whenever an exception is raised that exception will be compared with the exception written within each except clause suppose a type error exception was raised by a line of code inside the try clause it will check with the value error exception so it is not value er error so it will jump to next except clause so here it is mentioned either type error or zero division error will be handled by this except error this except clause so in this example as mentioned just now this except clause will be executed because right now the exception raised is type error similarly if it is zero division error then also this except clause will handle because we have mentioned a tuple of values as you can see we have used a pair of parentheses pair of parentheses represents a tuple so here this except clause is capable of handling two exceptions they are type error and zero division error if you want to include another exception also we can use that or we can mention that exception here separated by comma in such cases in such a case except this except clause will be handling three exceptions that means in all the case in all the three cases what are if, if the exception raised by this try block is any one of these three exceptions 
this exception clause will handle it. And if the exception raised by the try block is not value error, not type error, not zero division error, then it will be handled by this general except clause. So we can write multiple except clauses for a single try clause. And that means we can write except clauses for handling specific exceptions rather than writing general except clauses. If none of the specific except clauses handles exception, then only the general except clause will be working. One more point you have to remember even if we have multiple except clauses, only one of them will get executed at a time. Because we know that inside the try clause, we can have only one exception. That is, only one exception will be raised at a time. So, only one except clause will be executed at a time. The try clause in Python can have an optional final clause. Finally close is executed no matter what that is even if the exception is raised or not Even if the exception is raised or even if it is not raised the finally close will get executed So this clause is used to guarantee the execution of the statements So we can use finally close to include the lines of code that must be executed even if the exception is raised or even if it is not raised there may be certain situations when we have to use the finally close. For example, we may be connected to a remote data center through the network or working with a file or a graphical user interface. In such situations, we must clean up the resources before the program terminates. So in such cases, we can write those cleanup statements inside the finally block. So even if exception is raised and even, even if it is not handled properly, so even if the exception is not handled, the program terminate, isn't it? So even if the exception is raised, even if it is not handled, or even if it is handled, and even if it is not raised at all, the finally clause will get executed. So that's why it's mentioned, this clause is generally execu is executed no matter what, and is generally used to release the external resources. That's the importance of finally clause. We can guarantee that the lines of code inside the finally clause will be executed. No matter even if the execution is raised, even if it is not handled, even if it is not raised. Whatever may be the situation, the lines of code inside the finally close will get executed. So a try close with a finally close looks like this. And one point you have to remember, finally close is optional, it's not compulsory. Generally we use finally close in such a situation where we want to guarantee that some lines of code must be executed even if exception is raised or even if it is not raised or even if the exception got raised and even even if it is not handled properly then all such in all such situations we have to use the finally clause it is optional it's not compulsory we shall conclude now in this video lecture we discussed about exception handling we defined what is an exception and we also mentioned the keywords that we have to remember when we have to handle exceptions they are try and accept we also described about the finally close which is an optional close that can come along with the try close that is all in this video lecture thank you so much